Hello and welcome to the channel. Today we're going to look at some basic concepts for running oxygen systems through your ship using the default frames you'll find on the starter worlds. We're also going to cover a couple of airlock designs, give you an idea of well, basically a couple examples that you can use to get a good solid airlock that will not end up bleeding all your oxygen out. Alright, so first we have a very basic concept for the conveyor system, and probably, I have to say, arguably the better of the two. Uh, what this is is just a centralized pathing system. You can see we have a cargo hold, oxygen tanks, generators, vents. Obviously this is not completely sealed up because I didn't want to spend the time completing out the framework, so... Plus, having it exposed gives you an idea of how it would look. Now you can use the various glasses to cover it, so if we were actually reversed gravitationally, you could walk across this without having any air gaps. It's definitely a good feature to have if you want to run your conveyors close to your pathways. And I'd strongly recommend this for most ship designs, because not only is it centralized, which really cuts down on resources needed, but it's also going to make it more protected, more well protected rather. Of course, it comes back out into this uh, front area here. Now, I've been experimenting with some of the default armor blocks to see if we can get a good profile. Unfortunately, there's none that really fit this corner to uh, make it flush. But what we're using here is the uh, two by one by one block, and it flushes up nice with the vent itself. So, really reduces the uh, break in the interior profile there. Take a look at it from above. Now obviously this has a very skinny uh, neck area here on this ship, but beyond that it would be fairly well protected for most ships because you'll run this centrally. And when you're designing your craft with the oxygen system in mind, you'll probably want to start first with your cargo system and move into the actual conveyor system. I would definitely recommend starting there rather than starting with the exterior hull, just because, well, from first-hand experience I find it easier to make a properly designed and completely functional ship based off of core elements produced first rather than the hole, because then you'll end up having to expand the hole if you ever need to add something else on. Now, on to the second design here. Now this is more of a redundancy system, and this is probably going to be your better bet for combat-oriented ships. You'll have multiple storage, of course, and they will connect to each other, I've uh, centralized the generator here, but you'll probably want to add generator redundancy off of each of these, or however you do it, basically similar to that, you want to have that redundancy for generation. Now these, of course, uh, go through two different pipelines along the sides. Ideally, you would armor that up as well, and I've even moved the oxygen tanks forward. Sorry, I had a bit of a hitch in the game there. But the oxygen tanks are forward, so that way if your centralized storage is destroyed and your ice is lost, your generators are lost, you still have oxygen tanks further along. So basically, this takes damage, you lose your oxygen tanks, you'll have your generation to actually produce the atmosphere you need, versus losing the storage, where you'll still have the stored atmosphere that you can use to pump throughout the ship. And of course, you'll have redundancy as far as where it vents into the ship itself. Now, here is the most common airlock design. It's basically just two doors. You open one. Let me get down here. You walk in. You close it. Then you open the next. Now, as we discovered from our last testing video, you do not need to wait for the door to close to open it. As soon as it is toggled to a closed state, even when the door is still closing, it will count as closed in the game. So it will pressurize. Now, I've actually just thought of it, and I have not tested it yet, to see if it would maintain that pressure if you somehow lose power to the door midway through its closing process. But I would imagine, based on the fact that with it still closing and not actually fully closed, it would still maintain pressure as if it were closed. Just as you could not walk through it if it was slightly closed. Now. Next here is what I would prefer, rather, as a airlock design. It's still two basic doors. You'll see here we're using two timer blocks. Now, I've also done some experimenting with the venting as well. But basically what this is, is you have one timer block for coming one direction, one timer block for going the other. Inbound and outbound. So here we have our inbound toggle. We press that. You see it depressurizes. 
What that does is it closes the far door and opens this door. The key to this is starting doors in opposite states. So when you are setting this up, you want to have one door open and the other door already closed. And then you just put into the timer block, which I'll show you here. Go to set up actions and you have open close toggle on both of these. So no matter which one was open last, it will always work. Just as long as they are in opposite states. We come back in and let's say we hit it again. That'll close it. Now in this interior panel, of course, this is redundant because either button is going to end up doing the same thing. We hit the outbound, that closes, that opens. Hit it again, closing and opening. But with the panels, basically, that just gives you, or the timers rather, that just gives you an easy way to manage an airlock with minimal loss. Now, Lastly here, I've been experimenting with using these uh, armored vents over the actual vent for the airlock. Interestingly enough, I think this has to do with the directional. These two you can see here on the floor. We started with this one here. They would go green with only one block that would not fully pressurize even though the system was sealed and the vent was there. Of course, we tried removing the vent and it still would not pressurize when it's recessed down that way. So, we added the other two. And it would pressurize once we added this one over here. So what I did is I went and removed the generators on the two lower sections. And this one pressurized the whole thing. So it's not a matter of size. And with it fully being sealed and the vents on, that doesn't seem to affect it. But for some reason, with this looking up, with the gravity field pulling down, it does not pressurize fully. You'll get one green bar. So basically, if we cut this out, and we put an armor block to seal it up, you will see what I'm talking about there. Now, it doesn't matter if we go and remove the vent, it still will not pressurize. But if we go back and remove the armor block, put that back in, pressurizes fully. So that is uh, interesting there. I'm not sure if that was actually designed that way or if it was an oversight. We'll be putting it into the uh, Keen forums to see what we can find out there. But it does appear, my understanding, I need to test this with uh, different gravity directions, of course, is that this means that when your vent is coming upward and you have a flat gravity force pulling it down, towards where the vent is, it will not fully pressurize. Alright, well that covers a couple of basic airlock designs, a uh, couple of basic theories for conveying your actual airlock system. Remember, of course, because you're using the same conveyors, you can use that same conveyor system for your ammo, your armor, or not armor, but your uh, ores and any other resources that you may need. And, of course, that covers the recently discovered, I guess you could say, glitch or possible feature with the vents in relation to gravity generators. I hope that was helpful, and as always, have a good day.